Jean, you can go ahead. Okay, good evening. Can I please have a motion to enter into public session? I'll make a motion to enter public session. I'll second. Okay, and we'll move to roll call. Mr. Maslin? Here. Mr. Nevins? Here. Mrs. Wilson? Present. Mrs. Jess Kula? Here. And Mr. Dyfendorfer? Here. Okay, can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, we'll move along to comments from the uh, public on agenda items. Just a reminder for those members of the public in attendance, this is one of two opportunities for members of the public to comment on or inquire about agenda items. Members of the public also have an opportunity at the end of the evening's agenda to ask questions or voice concerns or comments on matters not formally noted on the agenda. And we do appreciate everyone's cooperation. Comments can be made at BOE comments at Manans.org. Once again, BOE comments at Manans.org. And Jeff, I see two in there and they are relevant to the um, COVID updates I will give in a moment. So if you want to go ahead and read those now, you can. Okay, the first one I got, it says uh, from Mr. Fiboulet, um, I would like to follow up on my previous questions regarding access to the gym to provide basketball to our youth and the school's plan on reinstalling rims to the outside basketball backboards to allow another safe place for our youth to be active. And again, I will speak directly to that. Um, and if there is a follow up question at the end, we can take it. Okay. Along to our second question. Um, second. Uh, I'm not going to read that. We'll move along. I'll forward this to the other board members. Hey, Jeff, proceed. Say again, I'm sorry. If that's it for the comments, then go ahead and proceed. Yeah, no, I'm just, I was forwarding that on so all the board members have that. Um, two approvals, is there anything else in the queue? I don't see anything in the chat or the Okay. You seeing anything, Dr. Long? Nope. All right, we will move along to approval of the minutes. Hey, do we need a resolution or do we have discussion before that? Either or. Just asking if anybody wants to weigh in. If not, can I get a resolution? Can I comment? Of course. I just want to take the opportunity to read the communication from last month's comments into the record. The uh, uh, no, yeah, I'm getting back feet. Is that me? No, I think it was Jeff, and he just muted. You should be all set. The 3821 communication. Hello, I wish to thank the board, superintendent, and principal for the information shared relating to the request made for sports and clubs to proceed at Manan School. I have to say, I'm disappointed that none of the board members, except myself, 
want to address modifying the COVID plan to allow spring sports and clubs to start. To start, without revising the over seven month old COVID plan that was presented as a fluid and changeable document, the ability for sports and clubs to use facilities inside and out won't happen this year. The next board meeting is scheduled for the end of April and following approvals for safety plans, as soon as students would, could engage in activities would be into May. I'd like to ask if any teachers have expressed interest in running for any clubs for students. Additionally, parents have expressed interest in students participating in engagement activities, but relied on my voice to express interest. How many parents need to individually ask for sports and clubs as starts for administration to act? Thank you, Bill Nevins. And again, I will speak to that in my COVID updates. Now we need a resolution unless there's further comments from members of the board. Uh, is it me? I, I was unmuted the whole time. Sorry, I, I, <laughs> I went on and on with a sentence. So. Um, are there any other board members that want to weigh in? If not, can I get a resolution, please, for the approval of the minutes? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menans Unitary School District accept the minutes of the March 8th, 2021 meeting. The word meeting is missing. Courtney, you uh, were frozen there. Uh, I'm sorry, did you, do you need me to read it again? If you could, please, thank you. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menans Union Free School District accept the minutes of the March 8th, 2021 meeting. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Resolution carries. Move along to the next item, which is a communication to the board from a solicitation from Gen, Gen Tech Works, I believe. Do you have that in your packet? The next, uh, as Dr. Long mentioned, we have business matters. We have a couple discussion items. First, the COVID-19 update and information, and then summer opportunities with Ms. Canavo and uh, Ms. Amatrano. All right, and I have quite a bit as it pertains to COVID updates, so I do have some stuff written down, so bear with me. The first um, update is changes in travel restrictions and quarantining, and that has to do with domestic travel. Uh, there's no longer a requirement to quarantine upon return from domestic travel, and that took effect April 1st, which was right as we were coming back from our, our spring break. Um, so we have changed our attestation questions accordingly. We're still requiring the attestation. Um, and we did also conduct, as we did coming back from the winter break, surveillance testing of 5% of our students upon return from the break. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that uh, we had no positive cases. So um, headed in the right direction, that uh, communication you received was about testing moving forward. I would suspect that's the first of many such communications we're going to receive um, and we'll wait and see what we are required to do and then certainly we will proceed accordingly. The second update that has come out first from the CDC and then a uh, short time later echoed by the New York State Department of Health was the reduction of the social distancing uh, requirements to three feet in certain cases in certain circumstances I will not spend a lot of time on that at this point in time, because the reality is there's no need for us to make a change. We are able to continue to maintain the six feet with all of the students here who wish to be here. Um, and I don't anticipate that changing between now and the end of this school year. That said, that is another one of the pieces we will look closer at um, as we look ahead to next year. The next piece of guidance that came out most recently had to do with end of the year uh, celebrations. And I have to uh, take a moment here 
to thank both Capital Region BOCES and our neighbors in Warren, Hamilton, Warren, Saratoga, Hamilton, Essex. I think I got them all in there. BOCES, we collectively put together a joint letter requesting that information sooner than later um, so that we could have that guidance and move ahead with planning our end of the year activities. Um, and again, I won't go into detail, but essentially, as long as we are looking at outdoor activities, we are going to have a capacity of 200. Um, again, we, there's certain protocols and procedures we will continue to have to follow. Um, and we are able to do that in large part, thanks to um, the capital district or the Manans farmers market. You may recall last year, we did hold graduation outside as well. We had a very small class last year. Um, and as such, we were able to accommodate it at the pavilion in the park because of our larger number this year, the pavilion at the park would not be adequate. Our 8th graders wrote a letter to the farmers market requesting the use of the market. They have a much larger pavilion and that has been approved. So the planning has and will continue for that. Um, it, and we'll also take these uh, items and this guidance into account as we look at things like field day. Um, and other moving up ceremonies, typically kindergarten. So my next item has to do and relates to both of the public comments that came in this evening. And communications, the board has received both tonight and previously <laughs> around a few things. One of those things is the use of our facilities by outside youth groups. The second is reinstating some after school activities. And the third is reinstalling the outdoor basketball courts. I've been able to speak directly to both of the individuals um, who have submitted these comments about their hopes. And I want to say I do appreciate their passion and their desire to have opportunities available for children in our community. Um, I have been consistently and will continue to do so reviewing the most up to date guidance and recommendations from health organizations and other advisory bodies to schools and in particular Manan school. Regarding the protocols they currently have in place, I have the following to share. Um, so, first, I'm going to speak to the use of facilities by outside organizations. The SED guidance is that districts restrict or limit school district facilities to district or school sponsored groups. This is consistent with our practices and would preclude the use of facilities by outside groups such as AAU or non school sponsored youth sports programs. Anticipating the possibility that this could change moving forward, we have received some guidance from our insurance carrier around added insurance requirements for facilities use uh, specific to communicable diseases and COVID-19, and we will be revising our building use applications accordingly. I did inquire with several of our neighboring districts, including North Colony, South Colony, Waterville, and Green Island. I chose those four because that's where our students have the opportunity to attend high school as well as wine and scale. And I chose wine and scale because they are the only other local K-8 district. None are currently authorizing youth use of their facilities by outside organizations. Next, I'm gonna speak to considering the reinstallment of after school sports and clubs. The most recent guidance from the CDC for youth sport recommends that individuals not engage in close contact sports with people who do, do not live with them. They go on further to provide suggestions should organizations wish to consider reinstating youth sports activities. Among the relevant items included in the guidance is the following. The age of the players should be taken into consideration and it would be much more feasible for older youth. Also, the sharing of objects like basketballs is discouraged um, and students should remain in cohorts. The most recent guidance from the New York State Department of Health indicates that basketball is still considered a high risk sport. Also, if districts wish to engage in sports, they must have a board approved plan in place that has been approved by the school's medical director. 
uh, based on the current circumstances and guidance and the scope of the programs that we learn and the students that be participating, our doctor is hesitant to support us proceeding with such a plan. Again, I inquired in this regard with our neighboring districts. North Colony and South Colony are currently allowing only JV and varsity athletics with required testing. No modified or elementary clubs or sports opportunities are being offered in North or South Colony. Water of Elite and Green Island are allowing only varsity sports opportunities with no JV modified or after school clubs or sports. And Wine and Skill is allowing no after school clubs or sport activities of any kind. Um, and then the last item I will speak to is the reinstallation of the outside basketball hoops. Um, as I said earlier, basketball remains a high risk sport. I do want to note, though, as of the March 25th Department of Health guidance, outdoor low risk sports are submitted are, are permitted. And this includes tennis. Our tennis nets have been reinstalled. Um, our initial plan did and still does restrict the use of school property. Again, in consultation with our insurance carrier and in conversation with our attorney, I have learned that the district as the custodian of the school property is obligated to ensure uh, community visitors are following all state and county protocols. Because of school hours, we have limited avail because of, I'm sorry, let me start over. <clears throat> Because outside of school hours, we have limited avail availability to do so on the courts um, and on the school grounds outside of the school hours. So we were encouraged by both legal counsel and our insurance carrier to post relevant signage regarding our protocols, which we have done. Um, the previously mentioned districts, again, the same ones I mentioned earlier, are either denying or discouraging the use of grounds and are also posting signs. So all of this said as much as I wish to support opportunities for the children of our community in consideration of all of the um, guidance and recommend recommendations, I cannot recommend <clears throat> that for the remainder of this school year and through the summer, that we allow outside organizations to use our facilities. Further, I would not re I would not recommend the reinstatement of in-person school sports or club activities this year. <clears throat> and lastly, I would be hesitant to reinstall the outdoor basketball hoops. Uh, as additional guidance becomes available on all of these, uh, we can look to revisions for next year. Um, but that's my statement, and certainly I welcome the thoughts or comments from other members of the board. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, it took me a second. Dr. Long, thank you for all the information, right? I know you've done a lot of work on this. We've had communication back and forth. We've had uh, discussions. I know other members have had discussions uh, regarding things also. The, the one that's getting me the most, and I can understand what council's saying, and I can understand the insurance requirements. Um, I haven't seen anyone who's insuring COVID anything, by the way. But that being said, activities you said in the summer would also be restricted. Um, outdoor hoops in the summer, and if there's no students in the building in the summer, can't some camps or some other things use the facility in the buildings, or can that be discussed? I, I'm happy to discuss it, but I need to hear from the rest of the board that that's a discussion they want to have or don't want to have. My view is that we basically just when we come upon it, we, we seem to have to live our lives day to day, week to week, month to month right now. So, I mean, I, I'm certainly willing to talk about anything at any point uh, should the science, the data and the statistics show that that it uh, would be safe. And I just want to say one thing about um, school districts, you know, AASA, and I, I may have mentioned this at a previous meeting, AASA, which is the National Administrator Organization, very large, um, put out results of a, of a survey 
of all school districts that uh, open their doors to students five days a week for in-person learning in September. There were only 24% in the entire United States that did that, and we were one of them. So I wanna just take this opportunity to really let that sink in for folks. We re-engaged our students. We did every day of the week. And I think we continue to do that. And I wanna thank all the staff, teachers, and everybody that's involved in that. We were 24% of the school districts in the United States. That says a lot, and you should really applaud yourselves for that as we continue that. And I think we've, we, we should continue our journey and you know talk about this as we need to um, should the circumstances warrant. I was just gonna say what Jeff said at the beginning there that circumstances seem to change pretty quickly. So right now, if you look at the COVID numbers for Albany County, we're worse for case numbers than we were in September. Um, that said, as the weather changes and things get warmer, you know, that, that might change. Um, so I'd be open to discussing it again for summer. Um, be just because of how things change. Um, but I agree with the decision to uh, that Dr. Long is, is recommending for the rest of the school year. I mean, statistically for the last month, I think maybe you're going to be wrong, could be five weeks, could be three weeks. The biggest demographic of uh, infections is between is children between the ages of 10 and 19. Um, so that's telling you something. What's that telling you? That Older people and compromised people are getting the vaccines and such, and the ones that aren't, our younger folks, are getting it. And between the ages of 10 and 19 nationally, you know, we have our hot spots, but New York is somewhere in the upper part of that pack, and uh, that's not a good statistic, and we've got to weather that through the next few weeks. And as Courtney mentioned, uh, as things get warmer, things will probably uh, be more conducive to opening up in some capacity at some point. Uh, I was just going to add, you know, I think all of us sitting on the board are very mindful of our children and the social emotional toll this has taken on them. And so when this conversation first started, it, it wasn't something that I took lightly. Um, I do understand I have children. I, I know, um, you know, they want to be around their friends. They want to do those things. But when we really put it into perspective, like you were saying, Jeff, we were lucky enough to bring our students in if they wanted to come every day where some children don't have that opportunity and they're not around their friends as often or in a school building as often. I agree with the guidance um, and also just being a teacher in a school. You know, we work very hard to keep these cohorts together in bubbles in order to um, not have cross contamination or if, if something happens in one one cohort, we can deal with that one cohort. Um, mixing children muddies that water <laughs> a lot. And now instead of maybe one classroom having to go out on a quarantine, you could you could then end up with four or five, depending on how many diff different children from different bubbles are coming together. But I will say, you know, reiterate what other board members have said that things are changing quickly things are happening and so i'm for summer i'm willing to have that conversation again um as we learn more yeah i, I agree largely with what other board members have said i'm you know i'm open to talking about anything at any point um and I think, you know, certainly looking at the summer is something worthwhile. Um, that being said, I think the conversation needs to be driven by science, data, and guidance from um, health professionals. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm open to the conversation, but and and you know, I think it has value and something we should continue to talk about. The last thing I would say about this is also the capacity for the administration and the, and the teachers, right? That's a very important thing too. They've obviously gone through as much as they have over the last year and had to really roll with everything that that's been given their way. So their capacity is very important too, and we don't want to stretch that. So that's a very important element to all of this, what they're available to do, what they can do, what their capacity is.
Anything else, Dr. Long, on that? I have nothing else. Does anybody else anybody else have any further comments before we move on to our presentation from Mrs. Canavo and Ms. Amatrano? All right, Jen and Megan, it looks like you are up. And go ahead and try and share your screen. And if it doesn't work, we will troubleshoot. And I asked Jen and Meg to, first of all, they've done a really nice job of, of looking at our current circumstances, where our kids are based on um, the year we have lived. Um, and taking a close look at what we have been historically able to provide for students over the summer and really more of what we need moving into this summer. Um, you know, we have had summer opportunities for our students in the past. They've been on hiatus the last two years, most recently because of the school closure and the year prior because of the building project. Um, so now I will stop talking and turn it over to these two ladies who have done a lot of work to uh, look at opportunities and they're gonna share with you what those opportunities will look like. Dr. Long, this is the first time that I am sharing on a Board of Ed presentation with WebEx, and I only have two options for a file and a whiteboard, not a tab. Do you, do I have to down, it was on Google um, Slides. Do I have to download it first, so, do you know? Jim, what you should do is if you just put it up on your screen, so you're looking at okay. it, and okay. then you share your screen, that should be what we see. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I will take a peek. And if not, I can try and pull it up from Google and share it. Bear with us, folks. Technical difficulties. Dr. Lund. Do you mind yeah. trying? I only have two options and it says share file or share whiteboard. Okay, so let me see what I can I do. I don't Give have an option second. for share screen. I'm sorry. Thank That's you. okay. Give me a second. It will take me a minute. Jen, uh, sharing whiteboard may work for you. Let me take a peek. Thank you. I'm sorry about this. I had it all ready to go too. Oh. Try it again. Well, Dr. Long tries, I'm going to download it as well quickly, just in case she is not successful. And that way I can just share it as a file too. I apologize. We see it. Yeah, it looks like it's up there. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Long. Okay. So as we get that set, um, I would like to thank the Board of Education for having us join you this evening. Um, Mrs. Ma Mrs. Amatrano, our coordinator of pupil services is here with us tonight as well. And we are going to share some information about um, some summer opportunities that we are able to make available for students. Some that we have done historically that we are able to bring back now that um, the building project is complete. Um, a brand new opportunity that we have been afforded because of um, grant money that we were able that Dr. Long was able to work in a consortium to secure and then also in a um, an opportunity around extended school year which is our um, six week program that we have to run for students who have um, substantial needs in the area of special education. So I'm gonna have Dr. Uh, Mrs. Amatrano start with our extended school year opportunity that we will be able to offer for students this year. Good evening, everyone. So I am going to be discussing our extended school year or ESY opportunities for our students with special needs. So extended school year is for students who receive special education services based upon their IEP. And the overall goal of the extended school year program is just to prevent substantial regression of skills. 
It's um, a six week program. It's dictated by the New York state law on um, this year. The dates we are planning is the start date will be July 6 and the end date will be August 13th. Um, and in the past, we would cross contract with neighboring schools like East Greenbush and North colony. However, due to COVID protocols, schools are hesitant and less willing to cross contracts with us. So as a result, we have the ability to host 2 half day programs in house, um, an AM and a PM. The students will be divided in the classes based upon their educational needs and the transportation will be provided for these students. Um, Dr. Long, you can go to the next slide. We also have an English as a new language um, ENL summer program. This will be funded through a grant to bring English as a new language students um, in over the summer. The overall goal is to increase language proficiency. This will be a four week program. The dates will be August 2nd till the 27th um, half day program. So three hours long. It will be taught by two certified ENL teachers. And again, the transportation will be provided for this program as well. So the third opportunity that we will have available for students is going to be a summer math and reading program. It was formerly called summer Institute um, and we will be moving forward and bringing um, these opportunities back available to our students in grades K through five. Um, Students are selected for this program through the use of local assessment data, and we really are trying to prioritize students um, who have been um, learning remotely. That is really where this was born out of, was to ensure that our students who are learning remotely have access to a summer program to help them to continue to gain skills. You know, it was over the course of the pandemic, we are working really hard to try to look at what skills our students have gained. And we want to continue to ensure that they continue to gain skills um, and then maintain the skills that they currently have. We will be providing targeted instruction on essential skills in ELA and math. And we will be doing that for each grade level. And we will also be looking to see what skills, underlying skills do they may that they may need to address. Um, these program dates will be the same as the students with English um, or English language learners. It will run August 2nd through the 27th, again, a four week program, which is historically what we have offered. Um, we will be doing a half day program and we are looking to bring on five of our certified teachers, either in elementary education or literacy to teach the program. And again, um, we are very fortunate to be able to offer transportation for this program. We are also looking at a middle school summer school this year. Again, typically we would cross contract or have our students attend local summer schools if they um, had struggled with the content. Again, due to COVID, districts are hesitant to take um, students from other districts into their programs. And we felt strongly that we wanted to make sure that students had the opportunity to um, regain and recover coursework if they were not able to do so during the school year. And the reality is, is that we have many students facing different challenges. So we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to work through the content that they possibly struggled with and um, be able to progress to the next grade level. This again will be a half day program um, and it is offered for students who have not passed two or more courses. That really is the bar in middle school to progress to the next grade level. Um, so we want to make sure that students who have struggled for whatever reason it is, have the opportunity to regain credit in those classes. Attendance in this program will be mandatory. And again, we will provide transportation. And we've started to have conversations with families for students who could potentially need to take advantage of this program. Um, I think it's important for our families to understand what opportunities and supports we have in place for our students. Hey, Jen. Uh, yes. Will that, be, will that be run the same uh, the same as the other, or is that different dates for the middle school? We will be looking towards August. We are just waiting for confirmation on the number of hours students need to participate. Gotcha. Um, there's very strict guidelines at the high school level, and middle school is a little bit more unclear. So I just want to make sure that we have the proper number of hours available for students before I put it out there. And then last but not least, we are excited to bring back our kindergarten warm up week. 
Um, I have to say this is probably one of our um, most cherished programs, especially for our incoming kindergarten families. We are looking at reinstating this for the 2021 school year. Um, this really gives kids an opportunity to meet staff, classmates, ride the buses, acclimate to the building, and really just kind of take the the unknowns out for them. Um, you know, Dr. Long and I always say whenever we have kindergarten warm up week, there isn't a single tier on the first day of school for our kindergartners, um, which really is, you know, pretty amazing. I have to say, because in a lot of districts, there's a lot of tiers that first day of school. Um, but our kids come in, they come in for the four days, about two hours a day. They meet the kids, they have fun. Um, so it really is a nice opportunity and we would be looking to bring that back. And again, we'll be able to provide transportation. And um, although our teachers are usually the, uh, the highlight of the day for many of the kids, I have to say the buses usually went out. Um, I haven't met a kindergartner <laughs> yet that uh, the big draw for kindergarten isn't riding the bus. So they will be able to ride buses as well. Those are the programs that we will be able to offer and the opportunities that we will be offer, able to offer for students this school year. Um, Mrs. Amitrano and myself are happy to answer any questions that the board may have for us. I don't have a question. I was just gonna say um, thank you for this. I know that our, our students need it, especially our virtual learners in not having summer school for two years because of the building project and COVID. I'm glad to, to see it back and the support that we're gonna give our middle school students also. Are we uh, feeding them at all? Any, any meals, uh, any, any provisions? We are not. That was one of the things we took into consideration with the planning um, was doing the half day program. That's not to say we won't continue our, our programs for our families and needs that we have in place over the summer. Um, but it was kind of strategic around that because we weren't certain we could get the staff to be able to do that. Go ahead, yeah, so Jeff took my question about the feeding, right? We want to make sure that the students are fed because a nursed mind is a nursed learning mind. One of those comments is the ELA and math programs. Were those grant funded opportunities that we have? So I'll speak to that, Jen, if you don't mind. We have um, historically in our title one grants uh, funded these programs. We did that this year. We also know, at least the board members know from some of the communications that I've sent um, and anybody who participated in some of our budget conversations that we have additional funding available to us as well. We're still learning about all of the moving parts to that. Uh, we anticipate strongly we will be able to use that to bolster what we already had in place. But even if that weren't an option, we already had in place Title I funding to account for this program. Uh, I have a quick question and a comment. The comment is thank you, like Jen said, for um, for putting this together and, and for offering this opportunity for our students. Um, I think it's great. Um, I also want to thank any teachers who are willing to work over their summer. That's uh, that's fantastic and much appreciated. Um, the two questions that, oh, especially the kindergarten warm up week, because I know the kids love that. Um, I know the PTA is going to want to know if they can do their meet and greet event and you know what that would look like if it has to be virtual or not, but just something to keep in mind. Um, typically, I think we advertise that during the kindergarten warm up week. Um, and then the question was about um, counseling services. If we have students who are in need over the summer, um, you know, students who are receiving those kind of emotional supports, um, have we, do we have any specific plans in place for how we might address those over the summer? So, again, we were a little proactive um, and anybody who was directly involved with teacher negotiations may recall that um, in our newly negotiated teacher contract that took effect in this current school year, commencing this summer, um, we have days during the summer that both our school counselor and our social worker will be working, and we can align those when we know we have kids here who may have those needs. And actually contractually, we have to have conversations, and actually some of those were today, and some were tomorrow about the number of days that would be needed and then by June 1st, we go ahead and we schedule those days. It, obviously, tentatively, things can change. Oh, 
your hand going up, Jen, or are you just stretching? Getting my glass of water, sorry. <laughs> okay. Everyone's pretty much covered my questions and comments, so thank you, um, and I appreciate the presentation. So thanks. Thanks, Jen and Megan, you did a great job with that. Thank you, ladies. Uh, we'll move along to business office for information and closed for the information of the board are copies of the following warrants and the claims auditor report for the month of March 2021. Uh, looks like fund A, uh, warrant number 43, $731,627.66. Warrant number 45, $209,138.72 and there's no resolution there. So we'll move along to the tax refund unless anybody has any questions around the warrants. Not on the warrant, just the uh, tax refund. All right, I'll read that then. So the tax refund for information and close for the information of the board is a copy of the consent order and judgment directing a tax refund in the amount of $3,536.42 as a result of the assessment review in court filing index number 905623-20. Uh, one, in the past, we've uh, had a resolution to approve these. Um, not that we really need it because it's a court order, but I need to again express my dissatisfaction with another commercial business uh, using a sliding scale of assessment value on commercial properties to reduce their tax value in the, in the Village of Manans, reducing the tax amounts they pay. Uh, it's an ongoing ongoing thing. It's happening more and more and more. And here's another commercial property um, that, that is uh, taking a, a, a toll on our uh, tax income base. I just need to express my dissatisfaction with that uh, uh, assessment value. And Bill, I'll address your comment. Yes, you're right. In the past, we did have a vote on this. And there was a recent meeting where I was afraid the vote was going to go uh, against it and we to your point we don't have the authority to override it we have the authority to be unhappy about it uh, but we can't override it and that was one of the um, adjustments to the agenda that was made um, with the review process we're going through we're going to continue to put them on here so you can speak to them but we don't have the you as a board don't have the authority to vote no right thank you for that and I meant to mention this also does the district send somebody to represent us on these assessment hearings? Because we have that right. Is someone from the district office or the district themselves or a member of the board sitting in on these uh, reassessment values when they go to court? We have not to date, but I think when we were doing our um, designation of people to sit in certain places, I tap, well, I kind of threw you under the bus bill and said, moving forward, no. Was it me? be our guy. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I need to get the notification of when it's happening so I can make a schedule arrangements, but yeah, I'll be there. Thank you. Anyone else? Otherwise, we'll move along. All right, business office for approval. Budget transfers, March 20, 2021. Discussion? All right, can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve the attached budget transfers for March 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Moving along to the Treasurer's Report. Enclosed is the Treasurer's Report for the month of March 2021. Uh, discussion or questions? I have a question. On the uh, bank reconciliation period 331, on the same date in consecutive sequence are three checks for the same amount being issued out. Uh, that's not a mistake, right? We're waiting for them. They're an outstanding checklist. That's not actually a mistake. I'm going to defer to Kathy on that one. No, those are our fingerprint. Um, uh, fingerprint makes sense. 
Um, just under that is also a purchased uh, artist pianos. Did we actually purchase a new piano for the school? We did, and we did that through Title IV grant monies. That's great. Thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. All right there, can I get a resolution please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menand Union Preschool District approve the treasurer's report for the month of March 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. 2021-2022 uh, budget adoption based on the information and materials discussed during the board workshop last week. The board will adopt the 2021-2022 budget. Discussion or any other final questions? All right then, can I get a resolution please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menand Union Free School District adopt the proposed 2021-2022 budget in the amount of $10,275,635. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Move along to the property tax report card adoption. Any questions uh, or discussion? Okay. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menands Union Free School District adopt the 2021-2022 property tax report card. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. We'll move along to uh, donations. Any questions? If not, can I get a resolution, please? Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Menands Union Free School District accepts the following donations listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Thank you to and Stewart. Just a, yep. Thank you to Stewart's. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Payroll calendar. Any questions about that? If not, can I get a little bit? Dr. Long, I know that we talked about this and I just cannot remember. If you could refresh my memory, it doesn't fall on a Friday, right? Every, we, we move to the 15th and the 30th to make all pays equal. And then the only dates then that it changes if, if that 15th or the 30th is on a holiday and we have okay. to adjust to get the checks to folks. Okay, I knew there was something and I when I saw it, I was like, I cannot remember what the conversation was. Thank you. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Union Free School District, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves the 2021-2022 payroll calendar. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution carries. Okay. Full calendar. Mandatory debt service reserve fund. Oh boy, there's, a, there's something to read. Whereas com, upon completing and filing a final cost report with the state education department related to the Menand Union Free School District capital project, it was revealed that unexpected proceeds remain in the capital fund from the sale of bonds issued to finance said capital project. Are there any questions or do we need any discussion or Dr. Long, do you have anything you wanna to add to that before we go into a resolution? I don't really, you know, we had leftover money. That's not a bad position to be in um, right. on time and under budget. And we have to move that into the debt service fund uh, the only thing I guess I would say is in June, you know, we've had the building condition survey, both CS Arch will be back in June to discuss that. Bernie Donegan's office will be there in June to talk about the future planning for this money that hopefully the board will put into that reserve tonight.
Any comments? If not, can I get a resolution, please? Be resolved by the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District pursuant to Section 6-1 of the General Municipal Law as follows. One, the board hereby establishes a reserve fund to be known as the Manan Junior Free School District Mandatory Debt Service Reserve Fund. Two, the purpose of this fund shall be the payment of principal and interest on outstanding obligations issued to finance said capital project. Three, the board hereby authorizes the business manager to transfer the remaining up to $376,500 in unexpended bond proceeds from the capital fund to the Manan Union Free School District Mandatory Debt Service Reserve Fund. Four, the monies in this reserve fund shall be deposited and secured in a manner provided by Section 10 of the General Municipal Law. The Board of Education or its authorized designee may invest the monies in this reserve fund in a manner provided by Section 11 of the General Municipal Law. Any interest earned or capital gain realized on the monies so deposited or invested shall accrue to and become part of this reserve fund. The separate identity of the Manan Junior Free School District Mandatory Debt Service Reserve Fund shall be maintained whether its assets consist of cash, investments, or both. Five, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution carries. We will move along to contracts for approval. Northeast Parent and Child Society Agreement for Services 2021, 2020 to 2021. We'll close for the board is a copy of the agreement between the Manan Union Free School District and Northeast Parent and Child Society. Uh, any questions or discussion before we get a resolution? If not, can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve the agreement for services between the Manans Union Free School District and Northeast Parent and Child Society for the 2020-2021 school year as per the attached agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Move along, we have achievements, special education services contract and close for the board is a copy of the achievements agreement for speech evaluations, PT and OT evaluations, psych and trennial services for the 2020-2021 school year. Any questions, comments? All right, can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve the agreement between Manans School and achievements for the 2020 2021 school year as per the attached agreement. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, okay, policy. First reading of policies. Any discussion on those? I would just like to take a minute to thank the board members who sit on the policy committee and members of our public and staff who also sit on that committee. Um, we are committed to getting through this work and we really want to move it along. We had great discussion in the policy committee around and if members who were present want to speak up, um, allowing NISPA to do the work that we've allowed them to do and not maybe getting as nitpicky over the, the language as we may have in the first go around. Um, and in the same respect, I would encourage the board to trust the work of the committee and what they bring forward. Um, certainly ask questions if, if you have them, but know that they have scrutinized the policy already. Dr. Lynn, can I just ask for the use of credit cards? Has that always been a policy? No, we don't new? have a policy. It is a required policy. And okay. we do have existing credit cards, so we really should have a policy on the books. Okay. Anyone else? All right, can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District, upon recommendation of the Policy Committee, approved the first of the following policies 
A, capital assets accounting number 6645, and B, use of credit cards number 8334. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Um, yes, yeah, so I do have one question before we move on from policy. And again, in an attempt to keep this whole process moving forward, because we are doing a full policy review, um, is the board opposed to, since these two are pretty straightforward policies, moving them at the next meeting right to the final reading as opposed to going through the second and then the third? I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Annual buzz uh, BOCES board education ele or board election and administrative budget vote 2021 2022. The administrative budget vote. Uh, that's what we heard uh, last week through BOCES. Um, any questions or discussion before we go to a resolution? All right, can I get a resolution, please? Resolved that the Board of Cooperative Educational Services of Albany, Schoharie, Schenectady, Saratoga counties be authorized to expend the sum set forth in the administrative budget document in the total amount of $12,199,555 during the school year 2021-22 and to raise such sum by assessments in component school districts, non-component school districts, other BOCES and other sources as required by law. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Jean, please put me down for abstain. I have a relative that works for Capital Region BOCES, so I cannot vote on their budget for the first time in 13 years. Um, the resolution does carry four to one abstain. Second, BOCES board members vote for two of the listed below candidates. Persons listed below have been nominated to serve on the BOCES Board of Education. Each component school district board of education may cast one vote each for up to two individual candidates, but there are no statutory requirement that they cast uh, one vote per vacancy. The only only one vote may be cast for any one candidate. These are for two positions for the term of three years. Any questions or discussion before we go to a resolution? We vote on these individually, right? Not. I don't know if it matters as there's the two candidates and I feel confident with them, but is it an Gene's individual gonna do vote? A, Gene, Gene will do it. a roll call and then we'll do a, the resolution. Thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, can I get a resolution? And then we'll have Gene do the roll call. We'll do it the other way around, Jeff. First the, the roll call and then the resolution. Gene, okay. go ahead. You're okay. right, right. Got to agree first before we do the resolution. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll start with the first, Mr. Brian Backus, uh, Mr. Maslin. Abstain. Okay. Mr. Nevins. Aye. Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we here? Uh, Mrs. Jaskula. Aye. And Mr. Dyfendorfer. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then we'll go to Mrs. Lynn Leanhart. Lean, uh, Mr. Maslin. Abstain. Okay, Mr. Nevins. Aye. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Mrs. Jaskula. Aye. And Mr. Dyfendorfer. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Now we need the resolution, Jeff. Yes, resolution. All right, so whoever's up. Uh, it's made. Be it resolved that one vote be cast for the following BOCES board candidates. Mr. Brian Backus, one vote. Mrs. Lynn Lenhart, one vote. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? And once again, I abstain. Resolution carries. Uh, personnel, we have appointments. Building substitute, Kristen Dietz. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve Kristen Dietz as building substitute teacher effective March 15th, 2021 through June 30th, 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. We'll move along to uh, civil service appointment. Philip Lipscomb, a 1.0 full time employee, custodial worker, probationary. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it, re be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Union Free District approve the probationary appointment of Philip Lipscomb to the civil service labor class. 1.0 position of custodial worker effective April 22nd, 2021 with compensation according to the current non instructional salary schedule. The probationary appointment period will be 52 weeks from April 22nd, 2021 through April 22nd, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries uh, substitute food service helper, substitute teacher aide, Eileen O'Connell. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District approve Eileen O'Connell as a substitute food service worker and substitute teacher aide for the 2020-2021 school year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Moving along, uh, let's see. Substitute custodian Larry Gardner. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve Larry Gardner as a substitute custodian for the 2020 2021 school year. And I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Welcome aboard anyway. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, let's see here. Long term substitute teacher, Stacy Rudder. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District appoint Stacy Rudder to a long term substitute teaching position. Commencing on or about May 15th, 2021 through June 30th, 2021 at the per diem rate of $180. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, okay, moving on to retirement. Donald Mannion, custodian. Closes a letter of resignation for the purposes of retirement for Donald Mannion, a custodian, effective July 31st, 2021. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved with the Board of Education of the Manan Union Free School District, accept Donald Mannion's letter of resignation for the purpose of retirement, effective July 31st, 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. We will miss I you would just <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. I was saying we will miss you, Coach. I'm sad to see this day. 25. The end of an era. Yeah, end of an era for sure. All right, moving along. That Board of Education matters. CSE, CPSE recommendations. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District approve the CSE CPSE recommendations as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, school calendar 2021 2022 encloses the proposed 2021 2022 
school year calendar for the Manan Junior Free School District. There are any questions? I'm going to get a resolution if there are no questions. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District adopts the 2021 2022 school calendar as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, let's see. Manans Union Free School District Public Library Vote and Elections, May 18th, 2021, a Tuesday. Election officials, can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manans Union Free School District appoint the following as Board of Registration and Election Officials for the May 18th, 2021 budget vote and elections, as listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, substitute teacher is fully cleared. Can I get a resolution, please? Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Manan Junior Free School District approve the following substitute teachers for the 2020-2021 school year as listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carries. Uh, let's see. Student matters. Class size update as of the 16th. Looks like 311 total. In person 221 and virtual 90. All right, we'll move along to superintendent's comments. Dr. Long. First of all, briefly on the committee updates again, I want to thank all the members of the board and of our public and our staff as well who are participating in these committees. Uh, as you can tell from tonight's agenda, the policy committee has met um, the and will continue to do so at least once a month. And we're trying to schedule those prior to board meetings so we can continue to bring you uh, action in that regard. The. Um, Diversity and inclusivity committee members have been participating and will for one more week. We had our initial meeting back in March, and then there is a webinar series being conducted by Dr. Louvel Brown, who is renowned in the field. Um, that has been the past two Tuesdays and again next Tuesday, and then we will come back together as a group um, to discuss what we take away from that and how that will inform our work. And that work ties in directly also to um, both our policy committee, um, and we'll talk more about that uh, as we go through the process, but also our strategic planning committee. Our strategic planning committee came together under uh, the uh, leadership of folks from CASDA to facilitate taking those board goals uh, that the board had worked on with NISBA earlier this year and transferring those into actionable SMART goals or objectives. So we started our work a few weeks ago and we are scheduled to meet again next Thursday night and continue that work. Uh, so good progress all around, a lot of time and dedication from a number of folks and we really appreciate that. Uh, the next item I have to share, we're pretty excited about. Um, you heard earlier tonight about some opportunities we are able to bring to, to our students and our families because of grant funding, uh, we received official word this week that we were approved for a uh, title, or I'm sorry, a McKinney Vento grant, um, which has to do with our students in transitional housing. Some board members may recall in the past, we have been um, in essence, not eligible for these grants. And that is because we need to meet the threshold of 100 students. Though we have a large number of our students and percentage who may fall into this category, we hopefully will never reach that threshold. What we can do is enter into a consortium with other districts so that collectively we can get to that number. We did so with uh, Water Valite and with uh, Mahanason. Um, we were approved last year, and then all of those things we had dedicated the funding to kind of went away because of COVID. Um, so we resubmitted our grant application. We're able to bring forward last year's monies um, and are really going to be able to take the money that we have 
to expand upon some programs that we've done in house that started very granularly um, with our own teachers bringing in food pantry products uh, and then Karen, our school nurse, expanding that to the capital district food pantry. Um, and now we're going to be able to take that to a whole new level. Uh, so as those plans play out, we will keep the board uh, up to date and I look forward to showing you the space we are going to create and what will be in that space to provide for these families uh, and in particular our students during these, these difficult and challenging times. Title three grant is in the works that was alluded to a little bit earlier this evening um, in the presentation that was given by Mrs. Canavo and Ms. Amatrano. Um, and Title three has to do with our English language learners. Again, we have not been in a position because of numbers um, to generate that funding on our own, but we entered into a consortium which is being led by Questar Three BOCES, which is over in Rensselaer County. And it's a collection of a number of school districts. Um, and one of the things that will come out of that is the summer programming that we're talked about, but also a significant numbers of materials and supplies that we will be able to dedicate uh, directly to that population of students. The other item I have on the list tonight um, is to acknowledge some NISPA Board Excellence Awards. Um, and before I do that, I will um, just read a little bit from the cover letter that comes along with these awards. The New York State School Boards Association Recognition Program is de dedicated to acknowledge those school board members who strive to continually expand their governance, knowledge, and skills. NISPA's recognition program is comprised of four achievement levels, which are reached by accumulating points for participating in various NISPA training activities, including state mandated training workshops, board officers academy, legal workshops, convention related events, and custom board retreats. So I am happy to announce that three of our board members are being recognized this evening, and your award certificate should have come home in your packets. I'd like to recognize Mr. Diefenderfer, I'd like to recognize Mrs. Jaskula, and I would like to recognize Mrs. Wilson. Congratulations to all of you, um, and thank you for your dedication to continued professional development. Jeff, I do have one more item um, that I didn't have on the list, but if you would allow me to, um, I did allude to it in the update, and that was the discussion we had been having on board term length. Do you mind if I go ahead? Okay, so the board has been uh, has had a couple of discussions around board term length. Um, they had requested that we survey our community. We did so. The results of that survey uh, was in your packet this week, and I believe off the top of my head there were 33 respondents. Um, in anticipation of tonight's meeting, we did reach out to look at the possibility of moving forward with that should we should the board choose to. Um, it would need to go on the ballot. What we learned this week is we're kind of beyond the point of no return in order to meet all the advertising deadlines to make that land on the next ballot. Um, so certainly we will want to continue to discuss it, but we will have to look at it a year out. That is all I have, Mr. Maslin. You're muted, Jeff. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Long. Uh, principal's comments, Ms. Canabo? So I have four updates for the Board of Education this evening. The first being um, a thank you to the PTA for their virtual paint night that they held over uh, spring break. We had quite a few families participate um, and we had an instructor that walked kids through virtually how to create a landscape um, painting of a tree with the moon in the background and the sky. The, um, the kids really enjoyed it. Um, the, uh, the artwork that they came up with at the end was pretty, uh, pretty incredible and probably is uh, in great, is a result of the, uh, our program that we have at Manans. We have quite a few talented kids on our hands. So uh, thank you to, for the PTA, not only organizing that, but then also figuring out the details around gathering all the materials, getting them home to kids, and uh, getting them all on a Zoom platform 
and muted so that they can follow along with painting instructions. So it was a great night for all the kids. Um, secondly, we um, are still in the process of kindergarten registration. We currently have 27 kindergartners registered for kindergarten registration for a kindergarten next school year. And most of those students were able to come in last week for a kindergarten screening and meet our kindergarten teacher, show us a little bit about what they know um, and meet the families. So that was exciting to see some of our newest little people come into the building. Um, we also had just a couple of nights ago, uh, the PTA hosted a middle school trivia night. We had a really great turnout for our middle school kids. Thank you to Mr. Nevins who chaired that event. Um, the students had a great time. We had kids present at 6th, 7th and 8th grade. Um, some fun questions and just really a good time by all the kids. So uh, thank you to that and they are all looking forward to the uh, prizes and special lunch that will be offered to not only the winners, but um, all the kids in the middle school. So it was just nice to see them come together as a group, um, both virtual and in-person kids. So thank you to the PTA and Mr. Nevins for that. And then last but not least, um, we are in the beginning stages of New York State testing in the area of ELA. We have um, administered both our third and fourth grade exams and fifth grade um, exams will be done tomorrow and sixth, seventh and eighth grade will be next week. You know, we've had um, a lot more um, lenient in how we and flexibility in how we administer those exams. And we continue to do so. We spread it out so our virtual students, if they would like to participate, have the ability to do so um, in a separate location. And then also um, all of our in-person kids as well. So that has been going well, and I look forward to continuing to work with our families through that process. Thank you, Mrs. Canaval. All right, informational material, budget hearing uh, Monday, May 10th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and our next board meeting is on Monday, May 10th at 6.30. <clears throat> on to miscellaneous. Does anybody have anything? Uh, I'll just add in their PTA meeting. There's uh, the next PTA meeting is April 27th at 6.30. Um, there's going to be a vote on two new board members. So if you're able to attend that meeting April 27th at 630, um, there'll be a link for it on the PTA's website. Go ahead, Bill. Can I go? Uh, just a couple things, right? Um, I had the privilege of doing the middle school trivia night and I need to thank the PTA for uh, sponsoring that, right? Um, people don't realize that all the good things that PTA does, I don't think they get enough recognition. I don't think uh, our community actually knows all the things that PTA does. This was one of them. Um, I pushed to get all the middle schoolers involved. We had a pretty good turnout. Um, the, the questions were great, and the seventh grade class actually won the uh, competition. Um, I know I did my job well because all three of my eighth graders complained about how poorly I did and they didn't win. So I know it was a good time, um, and I want to thank the PTA for, for doing that. Um, I also need to thank Dr. Long, Ms. Amatrano, and uh, Ms. Canavo for their outside workday uh, monitoring of the additional Google Classrooms um, and all the technical gugat that goes with that to make it happen. So thank you for all that. I appreciate it. Um, I noticed there's a seventh grade class barbecue coming up. I highly recommend that. Um, it's a good time. It's good food. Load up and it goes toward the outdoor educational fund, if that's right. So highly recommend getting some chicken barbecue from the seventh grade. Manans baseball starts May 1st. Another great community activity. Manans is one of those uh, unique places to live. Uh, they offer opportunities above and beyond and their baseball season starts on the 1st. Uh, if you get a chance, swing by the park and, and watch kids play baseball. I think it's really good. Uh, lastly, I just need to give a thank out to teachers. I probably don't say it enough because one, I'm not in school anymore coaching or you know doing anything in person. We had a chance to see a teacher in the hallway and say, hey, thanks for everything. I need to actually say it um, publicly, let everyone know that uh, we appreciate teachers and everything they do. Um, it's been a brutal year and a half. 
um, and they have taken care of the children in this district uh, 155 percent. So thank you to all the teachers. I'm good to go. I just wanted to take a second to thank the middle school teachers and the work that they're trying to do to make this a memorable end of the year for our eighth graders. Um, very sad we lost Camp Ginger Cook because <laughs> um, I know they look forward to that and it's such a great event. Um, but just the correspondence from Miss Ball as their advisor and letting us know that they haven't forgotten and they're working really hard to make this um, a memorable time for them. So we as parents, we appreciate it. Anyone else? I would concur with Bill saying that Brooks Barbecue is May 5th from 4.30 to 6. Sorry, 4 to 6.30. My child is in that class. That's why I know that. But uh, please come support them. It is for the Outdoor Education Fund. You have to pre-order, right, Jeff? Um, yeah. I think, I think they're just doing walk. Uh, uh, actually, it's no, just no. uh, pre-order only, right? That's it. The flyer said you can't. The flyer, So the flyer's up on Member Hub. I was just on there the other day. So you have to order your meal through the PTA. You can go to Member Hub. Uh, that You can link to that through the PTA's website or through Facebook. And it said on the flyer that you can't buy meals at the door you have to pre-order so go to the go to the pta to, to order your tickets yeah, the the flyer just came home today and after allison never gives me anything and she gave it to me and said dad buy lots of chicken it's for my class <laughs> all right i i concur buy lots of chicken yes <laughs> um i don't have good anything. for you yes if nobody has anything else we'll, we'll move along to public you know, Sorry, again? Bill, do you know do you know when you have to order by Bill? Off the top of your head. Jeff might have the flyer there. I don't. I, I saw the flyer. Yeah, I don't think the flyer yesterday said yesterday or something, but I don't know. It doesn't say it was on Facebook today. Give me a second. I don't think the flyer actually said need to order yeah. by. Never mind, then we can move along. Anyway, order order as soon as possible. <laughs> I got the flyer here. It doesn't have a date to order by, but I'm sure they'll take orders right up to the thing, and I'm sure there'll be further information. And there actually might be something on that member sub when you sign up for it. So just order chicken. They're all set. <laughs> order early, order often. Well, if nobody has anything else, we'll move along to public comment. Please note during the public comment sessions, members of the community, May address the board on agenda and on agenda items. The board president may limit remarks of individual speakers to a reasonable time. Speakers must identify themselves and the topic on which they would like to make remarks. And once again, BOE comments at menans.org is the email address. And I'm seeing one. Is that correct? That's what That's I see one. too, Jeff. Okay. Uh, this is from Vanessa Mercado. Mercado. Uh, let's see here. Extracurricular activities remain important for our students' academic, mental, and emotional health. It allows the students and teachers to interact on a more personal level than the classroom allows. We need our school district to help provide a safe place for students to reestablish relationships in a non-academic setting. I know the school board meeting, I know during the school board meeting it was stated that the that based on recent guidance, you will not be able to do it for this school year. I still want to encourage the Benin School District to investigate the possibility of bringing back some extra activities, whether they are reimagined as visual activities, virtual activities, or outdoor only activities, which can comply with the COVID-19 protocols already in place at the school, perhaps hosting activities by cohorts. If it is too late for this year, I hope the school district will seriously take into consideration for the 2021-2022 school year. Thank you for your consideration, Vanessa um, Mercado. Thank you, Vanessa, for your comment. Another one just popped up, Jeff. Okay. It's another one from Vanessa. Oh, I know, I just had to refresh my screen. 
Next week is from Vanessa Mercado. Next week is multi, uh, Multicultural Celebration Week here at our Manan School, uh, April 26th through the 30th. Stay tuned for more information on the PTA Facebook page and school's website regarding uh, themed days. The families have submitted many presentations to celebrate our diverse cultures. The submissions will be shared online. Thank you, Vanessa, for that important reminder. I've seen things coming home for that as well, and it is all over social media. Jeff, there's also a comment that showed up in the in the Q and A on the chat. Yep, just going to that right now. Mm. Q and A, you said. All right, there it is. Uh, this comes in from Madeline Royal. Um, question, if not this year, can we consider soccer for extracurricular sport? Um, and, and that's been in the mix before, and certainly it will be in the mix moving forward. And, you know, to Vanessa's comment and this one as well, um, I am very optimistic that we'll have updated and new guidance and we will be able to do something. What it looks like, we we don't know yet, but uh, we are committed to bringing opportunities back for kids. I've refreshed all my screens and I don't see anything. Do you, Dr. Long? I do not. Okay, so. It's like that is it. Um, mo we need a motion now to enter into executive session. The Board of Education may enter an executive session for the following reasons indicated as specified below the uh, Roger Freeman's open meetings law rules. So I need a motion. I'll make a motion we enter an executive session. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, one second, before we go in, there's just one more comment. Madeline says, thank you for all you've been doing to keep our kids safe. We appreciate you. Uh, that's all. And I will say aye to the vote. Thank you, Madeline. We appreciate that. So I need a motion. Bill made a motion. I need a second, if that's possible. John seconded. Okay, so I need uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we are in executive session, and I believe, Dr. Long, we do not plan on taking action when we come back. Correct. I, I mean, anybody is welcome to stay on the call. We will leave the meeting live. I will stop the recording while we are in executive session. I will remind the board to please mute, make sure you're on mute on this call so that when we enter into executive session in the Google Meet, it will indeed be a private conversation. Um, and then we will come back to public session to adjourn the meeting. Again, members of the public are welcome to stay. However, I do not anticipate we will take any board action upon return. All right, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen before we go. Do you see the screen that says we are in executive session? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Jeff, you have set up the um, Google Meet. Everybody Google showed Meet. Up. Yep, I set that yesterday. Um, okay. So we'll meet you guys and, on there, and uh, don't forget to mute your your uh, your meeting now. Or I guess you can also log off and log back on, but. We'll see you in a couple. All right, we were back in the Google Meets. We are back on recording. And it does not look like we have any public who remained with us. Um, so I need a motion to re-enter public session. I move we re-enter public session. 
I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then lastly, I no second to last. I need a motion to. A, no, this should be last. <laughs> We're in public session. Now we need a motion to adjourn <laughs> public session. I make a motion to adjourn public session. Second. Second. Oop. Either way. Take your pick, Dr. Long. <laughs> I'm picking Bill because he had the longest resolutions to read tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Oh. Guys, we didn't vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now I'll see you later. All right. <laughs> good night. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. Mm -hmm.